Come out, come out wherever you are. I found you. Yeah, dang, I ain't playing this game anymore. I found you too. Oh man, come on. There's only one more person you haven't found. Boba Fett. Boba Fett? Boba Fett? Where? Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Review. Today, let's take a look at the Hasbro Star Wars Black Series Deluxe Return of the Jedi Boba Fett. Okay, we're going to start this off two things. One, I'm probably going to get a bit nitpicky with this because, well, it's, it's, it's Boba Fett. It's an iconic look, an iconic character, even though he didn't do a lot back in the original trilogy. I mean, I can already look at it in the package and see things that I'm going to point out that I don't care for personally. So if you already like this figure and you're watching this and you're like, oh, why are you gropping about all that shit? It's because I love toys. But at the same time, if I go through all those, maybe fix a couple things or overlook something or I end up liking it and you don't like it, again, it's a $30 action figure. I guess what I'm saying, for everything I've seen in the past two days since this actually released, there's a lot of strong opinions on both sides of the fence here. So we're just gonna go through, look at some highs, look at some lows, and see how we come out on the other side of the tunnel. Looking at the package, it's that new standard that we're seeing with the Black Series, the elegant black, some darker, some grays, but they've also added color schemes in for different movies, different shows. And for Return of the Jedi, it is green. In the window, you can see most of what you're getting. You can't see feet, you can't see the top. Man, that's rocket up in there. Warning, small parts, don't put them in your mouth. On the side, some artwork of Boba Fett. It works nicely with that green color. On the back, same picture, but bigger. You got a little bio. Again, warning, small parts includes figure and five accessories. On the other side, just a little green, little window, little Star Wars. On the top, window. Amazon wasn't real careful, but who cares? It's trash. On the bottom, legalese and, and UPC. But let's get this open. <laughs> let's see where this is going. Somebody forgot to push the record button while he was unboxing it. That guy's been fired. He's out of here. But essentially, the figure is very tight in the plastic tray, but yeah, it was real fun and funny. Just imagine, it, it was hilarious. I even made another don't put them in your mouth joke because they always add these in even though it says it twice on the package. Ha 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 Okay, before even getting into the figure, you can already see it. We're gonna work on that helmet. Recently, for some reason, Hasbro has been putting heads underneath their helmeted characters, but then the helmet they glue on over it is a softer material. So if it's glued out of place or there's some detail work on the head underneath that it glues to, it, it sticks weird or it's crooked. In Boba Fett's case, the tray was so tight that it squeezed the helmet and it's stuck there now. I don't know why they're doing that. I, I'd like to think that they're, you know, hey, if you like customizing, how about you dig that head out and you can paint it and then you have a Tamir Morrison head. Uh. But I also think they're trying to keep the neck joints uniform across all figures, no matter how big the head is. If that's the case, I don't know why they don't just make this a solid piece and then hollow it up to a, a socket that will work with, I don't know. It's just weird. What I'm gonna try to do is try to heat this up, squeeze it back and try to get it filled out because Boba Fett's helmet is wider, not this way, this way. And honestly, that was way easier than I thought it'd be. All I did was hit it with a heat gun and it kind of just spread itself out. And that's what I was looking for is the straighter lines on the side. The rangefinder is a separate piece and it sticks out just slightly that messes with my eye a bit, but yeah, this is way better than it was out of the package. But looking at the overall figure, I, I will admit, I was kind of a negative Nelly coming into this review, but now that I've messed around with it for a little bit, there's a lot going on here. And while I have some nitpicks, there is a lot to like. Looking at the sculpt first, of course, the undersuit has some seams, has the wrinkles, has the little details that you can't hardly see unless you get right up on it. The big bulky pockets that we're used to seeing that uh, we have no idea what he carries in there, lunchable something. And then the pockets down on the front of the shins that hold extra tools. His comb, his toothbrush. Is that a protractor? A ruler of some kind? There's even a cloth texture. The feet are Boba Fett's feet. I mean, it has the seam line running down the middle. I don't know if these are actual weapons or anything, but I always thought of those as 
<laughs> little knives on the toes. But looking at the whole figure, the feet do seem small. The knee pads are nicely shaped. They have those, whatever, they shoot out of on the sides. The gauntlets, of course, it's several weapons incorporated into those, but they look just like they did in the movie. And even over here on this side, he's got his keypad where he can punch in his pin number, get some money out, and the rocket. The chest armor looks awesome with the, the dings and the dents. And it took me years to realize that these are attached to almost like a t-shirt over his jumpsuit. And Hasbro even made that a separate rubber overlay that not only makes it more accurate, it makes it more action figure-y. We'll get to that. That extends out and attaches to the shoulder pads that work brilliantly. They come over the shoulders, but if you need them out of the way, they flex up. That's the same for the belt and the side pouches. They are attached together and are completely separate from the figure. So it does ride up sometimes. You have to push it down, but I'd rather have it like this where you can move it, get it out of the way if you're going side splits or something, than have it glued in place and have it out of the way of the torso, but in the way of the legs. This this has options. Getting to the crotch piece, it's actually a rubber overlay too. This whole armor coming around the sash underneath. And it's not as noticeable there, but you get around to the back and it moves around. Part of me thinks they should have just sculpted that all to the crotch piece, but at the same time, with the greens and the silvers and the different paint apps, it makes for a nice separation between the jumpsuit and the armor plates. Rubbery hoses on the back of the right elbow running down to the gauntlet. The cape is a rubbery plastic piece. It's softer than I thought it'd be. It doesn't really get in the way, but it doesn't lay like I would like it to. And then up at the helmet, yeah, had to fix it, but once I did, that's the iconic look. So I like the body, I like the sculpt, I like the silhouette it cuts, but let's talk about the paints and the colors. I feel like they absolutely nailed the orangey yellow color of the shoulder pads and then the knee pads. The green on the chest and the crotch seem a little dark, especially compared to the helmet. Perfect world, I would have liked to seen this green down to here and here. Also, when first looking at it, the red of the gauntlets and up on the helmet seems a bit dark. Googling, yeah, you never know what you're gonna find because something may be cosplay, may be reproduction, may be original pictures, and even those original pictures, some are dark, some are light, the colors are off, but I really, really like this picture. A set picture out in the sun, giving you a good look at the true colors, and the reds are pretty close. They were a maroon color. It also shows that the sash was a brighter red. That's what they did, so I'm cool with that too. But then there's the lightness of the costume, and later on we'll look at the Moffex, we'll look at the SH figure arts, but I think Hasbro actually nailed the base color of the jumpsuit here. The problem is it's just plain. They put this nice wear and tear to the armor plates, the silvers and the dings and the scrapes and the scratches. On top of it looking plastic, you lose some of that detail because there's not a wash to it. And it wouldn't be just throwing a wash on there to accentuate shadows and sculpt. The original costume, it seems like, was dingy and dirty. The hands really stand out at you though. I, I know they were a different color, but this almost looks like a glow-in-the-dark plastic. <laughs> it just looks weird. And since we're deep diving this far, we might as well point out that it's missing some yellow paint on the chest piece. This was originally painted yellow. I'm talking about Boba Fett. <laughs> he found some yellow armor, painted it green, and then it shows through the more wear and tear there is. But Hasbro did get those marks up on the side of the helmet, a nice tampo to the shoulder pad. Same here, that does seem a little bit clean. And then especially this, just a touch of gold makes it stand out. The silveriness of those launchers on the side. So with all those little details and then everything on top, it looks nice, but it could use just a little bit more TLC in certain places. So I talked about the rubberiness of these hoses, but they do hold the elbow joint back just a bit. That's stretched as far as it's gonna go. The elbow reaches about 90. There's still some more joint to go. You see on the left side, it's supposed to go up past 90. It's interesting, there is a swivel with this elbow cover coming down, but then the lower arm swivels inside of that too, on top of the gauntlets also having a swivel. I think they did that on this side to match this side because the hose is attached to that cover piece coming down. If you are turning the arm, you can turn the hoses with it. That way you're not stretching them too far. Also with the rubber overlay piece, you can come down to a crunch. It kind of flexes out, gets you a little bit more range, even though it's not super great crunch. But that also gets out of the way of the butterfly joints in the body underneath this rubber overlay. So if you come forward with it, there's some flex there. Going over articulation, like we already talked about, there's a regular head under there with, I'm guessing a dumbbell joint and then a ball joint down at the bottom of the neck. With all that, you can look up, can look way down. Like we've been seeing lately, so much tilt. The rangefinder 
does come down. Butterfly joint in the shoulder can come forward, go back, arm hinges up, swivels around, and there is some rubberiness. Get the shoulder pad out of the way. Swivel joint at the elbow cover coming down, swivel joint at the lower arm, hinge at the elbow, and swivel at the gauntlet. You get all kinds of twisty and turny. The elbow comes up to about, well, okay, you push it real far, you stretch those cables, you're gonna get past 90. But I'd hate to leave it there for too long. Swivel and trigger finger appropriately up and down hinged. Nice. Ball joint mid torso somewhere under that rubber overlay. Pretty good hula hoop action. Ball joint coming out to the leg up to here. Back, not much at all. Out, well, shit, that's more than I expected. Swivel at the thigh, nicely hidden by those big old pockets. Hinge and swivel at the knee like we've seen with a lot of new characters. Up past 90. Swivels, it is more seamless than the double knees. On the production end, it's less parts. This is three pieces, whereas double knees is five. But you're not going to get the range that you can out of a double knee. Hinge at the ankle goes back, goes forward. Forward facing pin for rocker. For accessories, comes with his blaster. I, I think this is more brown than I remember it. It's essentially cast in a... It's cast in black and then has a brown dry brush over the whole thing. Because of the stock coming off the back, it's a little harder to get into his hand. But once you do, yeah, that looks nice. Oh, yeah, that works great. But then there's another blaster that's been cut in half by a certain somebody's lightsaber. And when I first looked at it, I didn't even realize that you can peg it together. There's this clamp that goes over the hand with a string and then the grappling hook on the end. It's a little big and you can see the knots and the string comes off and it's not very long. Plus the clamp isn't the tightest to fit around. Is it supposed to be up here somewhere? I guess you can have it wrapped around Luke a couple of times or something, but it's okay. But I don't see myself ever using this. Then there is the jetpack with a removable rocket, which is a neat feature if you want to use it as a But if you don't want to use it like that, there's some grooves, you put it in there it's a nice snug fit that's not gonna fall out. The two thrusters on the jetpack rotate at the base so you can have them in different directions. And then nice colors, but it's a bit odd. Again, several different pictures of the jetpack from different sources show different shades of colors, but again, that Boba Fett in the sun, even though the blue looks odd to me in plastic form, it is pretty close to that look. The wear and tear on the blue is nice. You get to the silver, it could use a scratch or two. It's when you get to the yellow that you think, what? It should match the shoulder pad, or well, the knee pad color, whichever, but it's this brighter yellow. I was gonna say it's the color of this, but even that's a different yellow. So that is definitely off. Ooh. There are these blasts that fit into the boosters on the jetpack. <laughs> I really like that. Something I didn't think I needed, but now that I have it, <laughs> I may have to pose it on the shelf like this. I'd be careful plugging them in and pulling them out though, because as snug as those are, I think that connection's stronger than that peg. So kind of hold on to the thruster as you're taking these off. We also get this fire effect with the translucency. Well, we saw that on the other one too. The yellow that works to a translucent red, even some flame jumps. You can see blue through it. And that's for the flamethrower on the gauntlet. It's made for that angle piece. You just have to find the sweet spot. Boba Fett stands ever so slightly under six inches tall, which is shorter than the first Black Series Empire Strikes Back Boba Fett. Boba Fett is listed as six foot tall. This one's slightly short, but the biggie is that it fits in with other Black Series figures, the new Stormtrooper, the Indoor Han, and is bigger than the SH Figuarts Return of the Jedi Boba Fett and Return of the Jedi Jedi Luke. Chest armor is a bit darker than here, but the helmet matches up nicely. And then the jumpsuit is lighter than this, but the overall feel, the proportions, the stance, yeah. Goodbye. And it's not like the figure arts had any shading on the jumpsuit either. Or, well, as much wear and tear on the armor. Oh, and you knew this one was coming. The Mafex figures. These have been the kings of Boba Fett's for me since they came out. And again, you can see the differences in the greens, whereas the helmets almost match up. The darker shade to the jumpsuit on the Mafex. The wrinkles are a little bit sharper on the Mafex figures. The feet are a bit bigger, seem more proportionate. The red is slightly lighter. Again, there's not a lot of shade work to the jumpsuit here. And then for giggles, here's the Bandai model kit Boba Fett from Empire Strikes Back. So the details don't match. Plus this is just plain plastic when you get it. One of the things I'm noticing as I'm posing it more and more, there is a seam line on the front of the neck right there. And whichever direction that seam line points, you get more 
bend to it. With that facing forward, you don't get a lot of up, but great down. If you turn the seam line around to the back, you lose that nice forward down, but for flight poses, you get excellent up. So if you're wanting range in a certain direction, keep that in mind. Just point that seam line wherever you want it to go. So at the end of the day, is it a perfect Boba Fett? Hell no. But it's a fun Boba Fett. The more Boba Fetts we get in plastic form, the more we realize that, oh, each one has something different, different shades to the color palette, different details in the sculpt, the implementation of articulation to work around some of the intricate details of Boba Fett's armor pieces and gauntlets and helmet. So there's a lot of choices out there, but Hasbro has kind of balanced all that out at a $30 price point. As always, it seems like with the iconic characters, they're very, very, very good, but not great. I went into this just looking at the figure in the package thinking, oh, that's off and that's weird and what's happened there? But when I opened it and put a little heat on the helmet, got it back into shape, everything else just kind of fell into place. It's got posability, it's fun to mess with, the colors are, well, <laughs> They're all generally there. The yellow on the jetpack is the biggest offender. Maybe the darkness of the green on the torso, but I can overlook that because at least it's close. That yellow, bam, it just sticks out. When it comes down to it, it doesn't quite beat Mafex. But at this point, going back and getting those Mafex figures can be expensive as hell. So th this is definitely a perfectly acceptable cheaper alternative to that. I'd put it up above the model kit. I'd put it up above the SH figure arts, just barely below the Mafex figures. So if you enjoyed the review, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus if you're interested in seeing videos early or just in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the foosh. And yes, I would definitely love for all my figures to kick their own asses. I got down in a kneeling pose and I would have liked to see more range of motion in the knees but for the other 90 percent of poses i've done today i didn't need that extra knee movement i grabbed about the hoses on the arms but i can get them into a two-handed weapon wielding pose while looking through the scope there's good there's bad but it definitely skews more towards the good now that i've messed around with it for a while